the mouth of a water bear or a tardigrade. Tardigrades are tiny invertebrates that live in aquatic and semi-aquatic habitats such as lichen and damp moss. They require water to obtain oxygen by gas exchange. In dry conditions, they can enter a cryptobiotic state of desiccation known as a ton to survive. In this state, water bears can survive for up to a decade. The species seen here was found in moss samples from Alaska. It is a carnivore that feeds on nematodes, rodifers, and protozoa. Water bears are found throughout the world, including regions of extreme temperatures such as hot springs and extreme pressure such as deep underwater. They can also survive high levels of radiation and the vacuum of space. What you're looking at here are cerebral arteries in green color from beneath the brain's arachnoid matter membrane. The arteries are sectioned, showing their hollow tube structure. The internal surface of blood vessels are lined with endothelial cells. This is the underside of a squash leaf, showing mushroom shaped trichomes and a slit stoma in the upper center. Trichomes are tiny hair like structures that can be glandular, secreting oils or other substances, or structural for defense. Stomata are pores that are the site of gaseous exchange in plants. The opening and closing of the stomata is controlled by semicircular guard cells seen here in the dark. When the guard cells are swollen, the stomata are open and when they are loose, the stomata are closed. The larva of an Asian lady beetle, also known as the Japanese ladybug and the harlequin ladybug. Originally native to Japan and China, this species was introduced to Europe and North America in the 1980s and 90s for the biological control of aphids. Now it is feared that it crowds out the native species in many areas where it has been introduced. These are uric acid crystals from the toe of a gout patient. Gout is a disorder of uric acid metabolism by the kidneys. It can result in deposits of monosodium urate crystals in synovial joints and nearby connective tissues. The deposition of crystals causes local inflammatory swellings that are extremely painful. The disorder can be treated with anti-inflammatory drugs and changes in diet. A domestic 13 amp 3 core electrical cable. Within the cable are three insulated wires, live, neutral and earth. Each wire is connected to the appropriate pin of a 3 pin plug. The 3 pin plug is used in the UK to connect domestic appliances and tools to the national 240 volt alternating current supply. The earth wire is an electrical connection between the appliance and the ground. In the event of a fault in the appliance, the current flows to earth causing no harm to the user. Most plants that rely on the wind to disperse their seeds produce a large number of very small and lightweight seeds. Many have a honeycomb pattern on the surface like those of the purple owl's foot clover seen here. The honeycomb is created by the programmed death of particular cells in the seed coat to leave only a framework of cells with strengthened walls. The honeycomb allows the seed to be very light but still maintain a strong seed coat. Also, it gives the seeds a larger surface area which increases their air resistance and buoyancy. A female northern black widow spider spinnerets. 
There are three pairs of spinnerets that secrete silk through piriform gland spigots. These venomous spiders are found throughout the eastern U.S. and west to eastern Texas. The females have the typical red hourglass shape mark on the underside of their abdomen, which is incomplete or split in the middle. Northern black widows also have a series of red spots along the dorsal midline of their abdomen, and many have a series of lateral white stripes on their abdomen. Female black widows are dangerous to humans, as their bite contains a significant amount of nerve toxin called latrotoxin. This neurotoxin causes pain and swelling and in rare cases may even be fatal. The genus gets its name from the female's practice of devouring the male after mating. Scented geraniums are not geraniums but pelargoniums. The two families were redefined in the 18th century having originally all been classed as geraniums. This is a close-up of the leaf of a lemon-scented geranium. The red spheres seen here on some hairs or trichomes are glands that secrete a scented oil. The scent discourages grazing livestock and attracts pollinators. The yellow sphere is a grain of pollen. A plain yellow mustard. This image shows the water-free solids which consist of mustard seed constituents that were ground into a fine paste. The honeycomb structures shown are the cell walls of a seed. A deformed red blood cell in sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is a hereditary blood disease which results in an abnormality in the oxygen-carrying protein hemoglobin found in red blood cells. This causes the blood cells to become sickle-shaped rather than round under certain circumstances and may block capillaries which results in inflammations. An attack can be set off by temperature changes, stress, dehydration and high altitude. A person with a single abnormal chromosome copy does not usually have symptoms and is said to have sickle cell trait. Sickle cell anemia is particularly common in areas with malaria, since those affected are protected from the severe course of malaria disease. This is a jumping spider and it stalks its prey before leaping on it from a few centimeters away. Here you can see its four eyes on its head. The large chelicerae at lower center are pincers that are used to tear up its food. On either side of these are two palps which are sensory structures for feeling and manipulation. Scientists are currently working on a technique to attack brain cancer cells using these coin-shaped magnetic discs. These discs have antibodies on their surface that latch onto cancerous cells. Then when a weak magnetic field is applied, the discs begin to oscillate, killing the cancer cells. The discs are just a single micron across, about 10 times smaller than the diameter of a single red blood cell. Though the technique is still in early stages of testing, it shows promise. This is a red currant berry which is an edible berry cultivated as a fruit. It is native to Western Europe and this species has escaped into the wild in many regions. There are several other similar species native in Europe, Asia and North America also with edible fruit. Red current bushes prefer partial to full sunlight and can grow in most types of soil. They are relatively low maintenance plants and can also be used as ornamentation. A human kidney nephron showing a cross section of tubule. Kidneys are the filtering organs of the body that remove wastes and toxins. 
The main filtering units are called glomeruli and the filtered fluid passes into the specialized tubules seen here where more water and useful substances are observed concentrating the fluid. The concentrated fluid then passes to the bladder as urine. The tubules have two portions. The first called the nephron is concerned with urine production and the second called collecting tubules carries out the final concentration of urine. Along the length of the nephron are distinct morphological segments that possess specific epithelium specialized for a particular role in the formation of urine. A cross section of an agave leaf. The top layer seen here is the outer wax layer of the leaf which protects the plant from insects and dehydration. This layer contains stomata which are pores through which gas is exchanged. The layer below it consists of water storing cells which came about as an adaptive response to the dry climate in which the agave grows. The green objects seen inside these cells are chloroplasts. These structures contain the chlorophyll which are necessary for photosynthesis. Among the water storing cells there are many crystalline needle-like structures called raphide which serve as a self-defense against herbivorous animals. This is skin from the palm of the hand and as you can see it is neatly arranged in ridges. Sweat pores can be seen as miniature craters along these ridges. Also seen are the cells forming the external surface of the skin or epidermis which have been hardened and flattened by deposition of the fibrous protein keratin within them. This tough dead layer of cells is shed continuously and is replaced by new maturing cells which takes about a month to migrate from the base of the epidermis. Bacteria in a domestic dishwasher Although dishwasher detergents are designed for cleaning, they do little in the way of sanitizing dishwashers. Food debris, soap scum and grease can cling together, build up and provide the ideal breeding ground for various microorganisms. Therefore, regular maintenance and the use of the highest temperature cycle is necessary to kill bacteria and prevent buildup of these potential areas of contamination. The larva of the common green lacewing starts its life as a compact larva having strong sucking pincers that resemble tusks. The larva's common name of aphid line refers to the fact that although it only lives 14 days prior to entering the pupal stage, during this time it hunts and eats about 500 aphids. It does this by sticking its pincers into the aphid, raising it up in the air like a trophy and then sucking it out until there is nothing left but an empty shell. The larva then puts the shell onto its spiky back and now disguised gets past the ants that protect their aphids who supply them with honeydew. The pink stigma and the green style of an Easter cactus flower. This is the top part of the female reproductive structure called carpel of the flower. Pollen grains containing the male sex cells land on the stigma and may move down the style into the ovary which are not seen here. If the male cells fertilize the female sex cells or ovules in the ovary, then the carpel may ripen to form a fruit that contains the plant's seeds. The teeth of a steel wood grater a grater is a kitchen tool which has a rough surface that you use for cutting food into very small pieces. A snowflake. 